scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever. Most of you, the reason, and I'm, I'm saying this sincerely from my heart, many of us today, God gave us a chance for a beautiful and a great destiny. We lost it out of lack of discernment. But thank God you are in church. There are many angry people today who keep looking at great people caught across different um, areas. I used to know this man. Today he is the chairman board of so, so, so and so. And he can't even remember me. Question, what investment did you make? You can't just show up in people's destinies and say, remember me. No. Honestly, if you learn what I'm sharing with you tonight, you will come and say thank you tomorrow because it will grant you the wisdom that will cause you to excel. Are we blessed? There are people today in their old age they may not even have any respectfully speaking they may not have any responsible children but they will never beg for bread because in their days of youth they were mothers to too many people for them to beg for bread the ones taking care of them today are not even their biological children because of someone who stayed maybe when he was on it as a student he stayed in their house and mama treated that person as though it was their own child and you see the boy with his 200 naira cloth and his his his, his torn shirt he vowed that one day you will laugh because of me 10 years later he comes with a car he comes with a house. He comes with a trip, a vacation trip. And people say, this is too much. He said, no. If she could see that glory in me 10 years ago, then I will invest in her life for the remaining part of my life. Make reference to my teachings, the law of seasons. Please, if you are yet to listen to it, go ahead and listen to it. The mystery of Pharaoh's dream, the law of seasons. You can find it on our YouTube page, Koinonia Global. Please listen to it again and again. What to do with your seven years of plenty that will help you stand tall even in your seven years of nothing. Relationships are powerful. They are advantageous connections. Now let's run very quickly and see a few principles knowing then that associations and relationships are all important as far as our growth and excelling is concerned let's learn a few kingdom principles that can help us have and maintain quality destiny relationships are you ready please pray in the spirit in one minute while while you're seated open my eyes oh god grant me the grace blessed by association someone here is rising a man of god here is rising a businessman is rising someone is shaking off the limitations of today to say i may not have been able to do anything about yesterday but i can hear this today and it sets me on a course for a great life hallelujah please write number one the first principle when it has to do with maintaining relationships are you ready now avoid competitive jealousy write it down don't say this is basic you just write it and listen 
Proverbs chapter 14 and verse 30. Avoid competitive jealousy. It is a weakness in all men. Competitive jealousy has nothing to do with being good or bad. It's a limitation in men. The moment we feel incapacitated based on an obvious reference, the temptation is there. It is something you must be intentional about. You think because you have the Holy Ghost, because you have the Word, automatically everyone will at one point or the other be tempted on this wise. It takes knowledge to immune you. Are we together? The Bible says a sound heart is the tree of, is the life of the flesh, but envy the rottenness of the bones. Avoid competitive jealousy. Next scripture, very quickly. Proverbs 27 and verse 4. Proverbs 27 and verse 4. The Bible says, Wrath is cruel and anger is outrageous, but who is able to stand before envy? That means these things are bad. Oh. Anger is not good, but relative to, to envy, anger is like a saint. Competitive jealousy. Can I tell you this? Except you've not been alive for a while. You must have come across this as a temptation. And the Lord is granting you the grace now to build through the immunity of the word. You must enter into a covenant that when God brings you to people and associations that are for your destiny, you must make up your mind that you will fight with the determination of a warrior to make sure that you run away from competitive jealousy. We live in a world of social media. We live in a world of statistics where it is easy for people to compare and contrast whether as a man of God, whether as a businessman, we live in a celebrity world where there is an obsession to show that you are the one doing this or that you have to be very careful. Thank God for westernization, but we must be very careful because it's turning human beings to become something else. Are we together now? There is dignity in your uniqueness. You must appreciate who and what God has made out of you. You know, many times when I speak especially to preachers, when they come to meet me, you can see this air of sincere intimidation as though, Apostle, you are the ones who are doing this and that. And very quickly and lovingly, I hush them and I say, no, do not think so. The basis of our judgment is already flawed based on our mindset. You will have to be God to judge correctly. You would have called Anna the prophet as a failure because all she did was to stay in the temple for more than 60 years who would give her honorarium who would put posters with her face there yet that was the first person that jesus was brought to before he met other people what of simeon the prophet our parameters for measuring success especially in our world today has to be re-edited from the lens of god's word so that we do not put the pressure that begins to fabricate competitive jealousy chances are excellent that when you see a man of god who seems to be charismatic worded as we call seems to have the anointing a crowd some level of influence chances are that based on our human parameter we place those people high we give them we accord them respect and don't get me wrong priesthood has a demand for honor and within the boundary of priesthood the honor that is demanded should be accorded but not to the detriment of those who may seem to be the nobodies because you see i have learned something by scripture and experience when god hides you is proof that you are extremely special to him one of the ways that god shows how special a person or a thing is is that he hides it look at the formation of the human body the parts that are more precious that are really responsible for your being alive and healthy are hidden something can bruise your hand right now and within a few days it can heal back but let that happen to your heart let that happen to your liver let that happen to your lungs avoid competitive jealousy is is god speaking to us 
yes envy and jealousy is something that is in us humans generally there is a psychology to it that you see everyone sincerely no matter how right or wrong generally speaking everyone sincerely is attempting to make efforts to make meaning out of their lives whether or not they end up getting it is a different thing but intrinsically i've had the honor and privilege of talking with all kinds of people you can talk with someone who is a drug addict and you look at him and say my, my friend now that you are in this do you love this kind of life you're living he will tell you no he will say what did you aspire to be they will tell you i wanted to be a pilot i wanted to be a this and that so nobody generally would want to just get up and destroy themselves except that you see i teach the school of ministry students that success has an implication on those who are the onlookers because the moment you are commanding results of any sort generally your result kills the excuses of people who have used excuses to justify mediocrity so if they say i was not able to do well they say no that's not true what of so 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 and so under the same condition and that becomes the root of jealousy avoid competitive jealousy what makes you avoid competitive jealousy the knowledge that you are a unique expression of god's glory unique expression of god's glory hmm. are we blessed number two how do you maintain relationships avoid ill or evil speaking avoid ill or evil speaking and that extends to things like backbiting gossip and so on and so forth avoid ill or evil speaking three scriptures very quickly titus chapter 3 and verse 2 let's hurry up titus chapter 3 and verse 2 second principle avoid evil or ill speaking that extends to gossips backbiting titus 3 and verse 2 the bible says to speak evil of no man to be no brawlers but gentle showing all meekness unto all men did you know there are people who literally do not have a conversation if it's not gossip i hope you are not the one as you are talking back at me now i hope you are not just talking about someone else i'm not being sarcastic no discussion if it's not a discussion about this one and that one have you seen what is happening in the presidency have you seen what is happening with men of god in our world and we sit down and analyze for the purpose of demeaning and destruction not building avoid evil speaking god gave you the gift of words and a mind for edification and lifting not for tearing down others are we learning yeah proverbs chapter 6 let's look at 16 to 19 proverbs chapter 6 god is delivering someone right now tonight the bible says these six things doth the lord hate now pay attention when the lord tells you he hates something you want to know what it is yea seven are an abomination unto him uh-huh number one a proud look two a lying tongue three hands that shed innocent blood four a heart that devised wicked imaginations five feet that be swift in running to mischief seven what number now six a false witness that speaketh lies and then the bible says he that soweth discord among brethren may god forbid it but the responsibility of leadership and ministry mandates that i teach it that you do not become the person who goes from house to house place to place job to job joining the heads of innocent people together did you hear what this pastor said about you did you hear what this one said about you and the other person says really i've been waiting for this moment no One of the ways we make decisions is to understand the consequences that are at the other side of the decisions before we make them. Is God helping us? 
Now, I, I, don't, I don't mean, listen, we are people of love. When I teach like this, you know that I teach from a standpoint of love. But there are times that we need to bring out, he said, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Are we together? Maybe some of us came from backgrounds where sincerely, that was all you saw and that was all you knew. Every time people sat together, all that they did was to analyze this, analyze that. Now, the difference between a meaningful discussion and backbiting or evil speaking is motive. You will eventually have to talk about people and talk about things. Are we together? But the difference is motive. As leaders, you will have to talk about people. As family people, parents, children, you will have to discuss people. But the difference is motive. When your discussion is to create an occasion to tear people down, it is called evil speaking. We must obtain grace tonight in the name of Jesus Christ to be mature, to rise beyond the grip of these kinds of things. And many of us, this is how we derive our relevance among our associations. We are usually the ones who bring in news. Have you heard we say? What again? Ah, you didn't hear that the other director did this one and that. I saw it all. One of the blessings of being purposeful is focus. That when you are purposeful, your purpose occupies you so much, you hardly have extra time for frivolities and the things that make for base living. Are we together now? Avoid evil speaking. You want to maintain relationships that bless you? Please pay attention to the end of it because there are a few things about men that I will have to tell you. Number three, for sake of time. Are you ready? And are you learning? Koinonia is quiet. Thank you, Holy Spirit. God is walking. Are you ready? The third key to maintaining quality destiny relationships is avoid offense. Write it down. Avoid offense. What is offense? Offense is the ease with which you get irritated, agitated, angry, resentful the ease there are some of us who are as volatile as kerosene or petrol anything at all even if jesus is said loud loud is enough to annoy you no you must avoid offense this was one. i believe that this was one of the things that brought john the baptist down because john spent his time and had a wonderful track record but when he was now done he himself said i must decrease that jesus would increase excellent john would have finished strong and well except that when he went he was idle and he was no longer shining an offense came in are we together now yeah and he now went to go and discuss another man's business and they jailed him about to kill him and now he sent the man who ordained jesus he said go and tell him are you the messiah or should we expect another that kind of statement when someone looks at you haven't blessed him for years or haven't blessed her for years and say are you really my father or my mother that is not a statement deserving an answer it is proof that offense has come in the way you are behaving are, are you really my father And what do you think your father would do when you ask him that kind of question? Because <laughs> everybody that asks it, receives it. <laughs> Are you learning? Can I tell you this? By the privilege of walking in the anointing, I can tell you, you will never be trusted with the anointing over nations if you live in offense. Because you see... The probability of you being offended is 100% every day. One hundred, not 99.9, 100% .9, every day. As I'm standing here right now preaching, talking to the whole world, I'm sure someone is trying to call my phone. 
and you'll be surprised among the hundreds of text messages I will receive. You will think it's everybody saying, bless you, Hosanna. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Until you find a text that says, I used to know you 10 years ago. You were not this arrogant. Now that I'm calling and you are not picking, I think you need to go for a retreat. What do you do? Listen. Listen. I'm being very truthful and honest with you, ladies and gentlemen. Some of those text messages have come from you. And even if it's the you before, it still came from you. <laughs> Are we together now? Look up. Can you stand in the midst of fire and yet your joy is intact? There are people today who continue to visit the hospital daily because they have not been enlightened spiritually to know that offense is something that if you allow it to come in like a cancer and tear you to death. Someone can look at you and out of all the wonderful commendations that God is giving about you, oh, you are the director, they just gave you an appointment. Another person will send a text and say, so the whole of Nigeria, the presidency did not know, we need to pray for deliverance. You are the one they brought to punish us. And now you are reading the text message. <laughs> you are laughing because it has happened to you. Some of you, after ministering, and you can watch the worship team ministering, and all you are seeing is what was wrong. Why didn't you continue and extend the song? That song is not all. There is a part of it you didn't sing. Is that, didn't you enjoy the part you heard? Say, in the name of Jesus, I obtain grace to rise above offense. As you enter this door and come for koinonia, offense starts. Someone can push you and sit down in a way that you say, is it church you came to or you came to destroy us? And the person says, it's me you are talking to. When they make the altar call, make sure you are the first who comes here. And two of you are talking. And you see, in the minds of the people, everybody believes he's the one who is in a right relationship with the Holy Ghost. And the Holy Spirit is watching two of you. Hallelujah. In 1 Corinthians 13 and verse 5, 1 Corinthians 13 and verse 5, Paul speaking about the character of true love. He says that love does not behave itself unseemingly. It seeketh not her own. That love is not easily provoked or easily angered and thinketh no evil. Can I tell you this? when you look at your world and you see a world full of evil you are right if you look at your world and you see a world full of the glory of god you are right you must train your eyes to see what god is doing train your eyes to see that in the midst of the decadence oh men of god are fake men of god are collecting powers around. is that what you are seeing or are you seeing that God is lifting people and helping people and even helping those who were ones who now went to dapple themselves in a lot of things? Why don't you see them coming back to the faith and you see God rising and the church growing? You must maintain a gaze that is consistent with the mind of Christ. When Jesus looked at man, as a species his creation he would have seen death hell decadence all kinds of things but he came full of love and even while they looked at him he hung on that cross when he stood with barabbas they were willing to release a criminal so that they would crucify him he watched the faces of the people and he saw those who ate his bread he saw those who took all of these things. They were there at his crusade. And they even had the effrontery to say, let his blood be on our children. And the innocent children were there watching. They didn't know what they were putting on their heads. And Jesus looked at them. And with the compassion that only God can have, love poured out from him to them. Very powerful. Listen, let me tell you, when you live a life that is void of offense, 
not fake deliverance genuine deliverance from offense anytime you find reason for offense remember what jesus did for you and remember what you did to him remember I really want to worship you, my Lord. You have won my heart and I am yours. Forever and ever, I will love you. You are the only one who died for me. Gave your life to set me free. So I lift my voice to you in adoration. Listen, many of us today do not have friends in our lives. The lifespan of relationship with you is two weeks. You must fight. You must fight. It's not just an attack. You, you've been delivered. You've been, hands have been laid on you. You took communion. Come on. This is not about demons. You must come to yourself like the prodigal, whether son or daughter, pro, the prodigal person this night. Listen, listen, listen to what I'm saying. Please pay attention. You can't continue to live your life like this. The moment people are afraid of you because they know in five minutes something must annoy you. They gather during wedding, you are watching. In five minutes, you are already angry. Someone comes and says, Please, can I pick something? Can you? Is it only my table? You why don't you just embrace the fruit of the spirit? Listen, listen. I have a responsibility to teach you this. Many of us would have been greater than we are now. Do you know there are people who there were deliberations around your promotion? And from a standpoint of your technical knowledge, you were sound. But they said this person cannot be trusted with this office. His anger and his offense will kill everybody. We will lose in this company not because of lack of technical know-how he does not have the maturity and the stability can i tell you this weakness is great strength in the spirit don't be under pressure to prove that you are not a small person look let me tell you abuja this is one thing i saw in this city everybody is a big man and nobody once you imagine look just because i didn't come out with my car today don't think i have i watch with shock and wonder how people behave and I, what is this the fact that you have to say you are a big man that already because the bible said neither do men put a lamb see let me tell you something about god if god has lifted you bar you are lifted if you are not yet there no matter what you do something in you will betray you and let people see that there is a loophole you are not really there avoid offense number four principles of relationships are you ready practice forgiveness write it down forgiveness is a type of giving it's not only tithes and offerings you give forgiveness is a type of giving practice forgiveness mark eleven twenty five. very quickly please let's rush media help us mark eleven twenty five. Do we have it projected? Mark eleven twenty five. The Bible says, And when ye stand praying, aha, uh -huh, here it is. You know Africans pray. You know Nigerians pray. Tongue talking Christians. When ye stand praying, the Bible says, Forgive. If ye have ought against any, that your Father also which is in heaven may forgive you. Forgive. Ephesians 4.32 Ephesians 4.32 <laughs> I'm only imagining someone's heart with saying, Apostle, jump this one. Let's go to something else. Don't bring forgiveness because God is saying, thank you, my son. I've been trying to draw it to this person. Forgive. Forgive your wife. Forgive your husband. And you are so uncomfortable coming to church. Please sit quietly. This is why God brought you. So that you will be blessed. So that you will be lifted. The Bible says, and be ye kind one to another 
tender hearted forgiving one another even as God for Christ's sake had forgiven you can I tell you this anybody who tells you forgiveness is easy is lying anybody who tells you forgiveness is easy has not been offended in this life there are people who are too innocent to, for, to, to understand this teaching this night <laughs> nothing has happened in their life they've been shielded by so many people forgiveness is a kind of giving and you see the thing about forgiveness is when you forgive you don't help the one you are forgiving you help yourself it is true bitterness and offense is like piercing yourself with a knife and holding it there bitterness and offense is like drinking poison and expecting another person to die you keep gulping poison and watch you are not dead let me drink another one you are not dead let me drink another one are you learning practice forgiveness luke chapter 6 and verse 37 let's hurry up luke 6 37 kilamando saprakatuziata principles of relationships it says judge not and ye shall not be judged condemn not and ye shall not be condemned forgive and ye shall be forgiven did you know that the people who have it hardest to forgive are the ones who are even in greater need of forgiveness is that true you will never be able to excel having profitable relationships and profitable associations you will never be able to live with anybody any organization any friends at all if you do not practice forgiveness there are families that have siblings that are like tom and jerry cats and dogs it is possible that there are couples here listening and here in koinonia they don't talk to one another when it's time to sleep everybody just goes to their side of the bed just jumps there and everybody is talking to god two of them this one is saying lord i thank you you are my god and he's saying it in a way that pains the other person lord if i depend on men will, will i ever rise thank you for your bear come on listen this is the night when you go back home and swallow your pride tonight come to the school of the spirit don't you know in his hands are the keys to eternal life it's a little here a little there and then your day will dawn he's at work in you changing everything in obedience listen can i tell you this if you don't practice saying i am sorry you will never be able to excel in this life nations have gone to war today simply because someone was too proud to say i'm sorry i'm sorry does not kill i'm sorry simply means i am better today than i was yesterday are we together there are people who have lost jobs today simply because they could not say i am sorry there are people who have lost profitable relationships business relationships they have been driven from companies today because they could not say i am sorry let me teach you something do not allow your spiritual growth to make for an occasion where you cannot say i'm sorry there are parents that need to say i'm sorry to their children don't be ashamed it does not stop you from being a father or mother there are children who need to say i'm sorry if a man pays your school fees and you come back with a result that is an evil report why should he not quarrel you <laughs> now you get angry and you are not contributing anything i'm sorry has sent nations to go for war there are people today politicians including men of god there are people today who cannot see eyeball to eyeball i am sorry the pride of man is beyond comprehension is someone learning yeah you must as a principle practice forgiveness remember that forgiveness is a kind of giving 
Apostle, you don't know me. I'm cool. But if anybody annoys me, it's an attack. We've been holding miracle services here. We've asked that people write their prayer request. Why do you think we kneel down and pray on these things? See, I'm saying this to you so that I, I trust God that God will help us to live such an excelling life. In truth, I will tell you, it's easier said than done. This is why we need the Holy Spirit. Are we together? Maybe there is a couple that need to go back home tonight and say, look, let's stop this thing. This is one year of this childishness. Let's sit down. The man is waiting for the woman to take the step. I paid your bride price. The woman is waiting for the man to take the step. You are the one who came to ask me. You see, provided this kind of self keeps happening. God in heaven who created us is not ashamed to come and say, I have loved you with an everlasting love. I have drawn you with my loving kindness. Self is a terrible thing. It can recycle seasons of pain again and again and again. There are people who stole from factories and were sent away. And just the unashamedness to go back and say, look, I really am sorry. This is it. I, I take responsibility. There are politicians, respectfully speaking, who have maybe in time past, I hope not presently so, have stolen money from the... And I'm sorry and a sense of responsibility. No, sir. Practice forgiveness. Some of you are even offended with God right now. God, I don't know how you want us to pray again. I've prayed everything. You, you, one day or oh day, I wish you, you could read some of the text messages people sent me. Since they cannot see God, you who have said you are representing Him, they carry that aggression that since He didn't reach the throne room. They bring it and land it on you. They can write something like, Apostle, good evening. I'm tired. I don't know that, 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 and this and that and that. I'm offended. Since God hears you, talk to him that I'm tired. And you know what? Now, imagine that I see that and I call the person. I say, see, don't think because I'm preaching quiet. No. 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 See, our world interprets a life of aggression as masculinity. By masculinity, I don't just mean it to males. When you are cool-headed and you are temperate, the world looks at you as a weak person. They like people who are aggressive. You are, a, you are, you are, you are almost like, I don't want to use the expression a freedom fighter because, you know, and it looks like you, you are somebody who fights to the end. And people say, that's right. Can I tell you? In this kingdom, learn from Jesus. Learn from Jesus. There are times when you are strongest, when you look weakest. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And when you are strong and you can bring your strength under control, you are strong indeed. I know a gentleman many years ago, he used to be a builder and then he fights boxing. I think they have a license. You don't fight outside the ring. There's, there are some rules that they have. And one time, you know, he had a problem with this bike man. And the guy, the bike man, so he told me, was just shouting and said, don't think because you are big, I can be. And, and he looked at him and said, oh dear. I mean, look at this, look at this, look at this guy. <laughs> can I tell you, when you have the power to do so much and you can restrain yourself, you, are, you deserve an applause by the whole world indeed for the dexterity and the excellency of your maturity. God had the power to call 10,000 angels and yet he was led like a sheep to the slaughter. You could imagine Satan and the Roman government saying, finally we brought this man to his knees. This was the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, looking so weak, had bled and looked very weak. Let me tell you this, fear weak people. It was weakness that killed strength on the cross. When you see people look weak or act weak towards you, it's not that they are incapacitated. It's that they are walking based on a higher level of light and intelligence. By this, some of you need to go to your office tomorrow 
and stop that petty fight and you know some of these things that is almost rubbishing your pedigree no buy a gift and go and give the person and the woman is saying no there must be charm in this gift you would think she would say thank you no i don't trust this person go and throw it no problem as for me i've made up my mind that i will live a peaceful life a peaceful life is a goal that you can set and live a peaceful life within the times that you have serving the purposes of the kingdom and i challenge you my proposal to you is that you rise to a higher realm of living there is a superior realm of living above and beyond the grips of this kind of mediocre living there is there is living with excellence and this is the key we're almost done number number five very quickly you must have a high degree degree of tolerance still colossians chapter 3 from 12 to 13. tolerance is similar to forgiveness except that tolerance means you are prepared to have that offense happen again <laughs> you see the difference between forgiveness and tolerance is that forgiveness is creating making accommodation for weakness are we together now a one-time weakness tolerance means you factor in that limitation and live with it because it will happen again and again and again there are people who you need to go past forgiving them they will not change create a system of tolerance are we together i remember many years ago truthfully speaking i was talking to a couple and i think the woman was saying that the man that he is not responsible and yet he prays like a prayer warrior when she is shouting to the roof and you know she just said he should reduce his voice he's disturbing her and so on and so forth uh i i, I couldn't say forgive him because that will not end for as long as that man will pray now that you are married to him you are there for life they ask you all these questions you said yes now you are there are we together now and honestly when i saw the man he truly is a prayer warrior when you hear his voice you know that oh no this man is not he doesn't he doesn't come and just mumble tongues he prays he's praying and she felt he was not being as responsible as she should be now how do you tell her forgive him forgive him means you don't expect it to happen again tolerance means it will happen again and again and again an example your security man remember you forgave him january he promised that it will not happen again and he slept on duty he slept on duty and promised that if he sleeps again you should drive him and he slept before you came here so let me advise you and tell you what to do you don't forgive him you tolerate him you see disappointment only comes when there are expectations when there are no expectations there is no disappointment tolerance some of the people that god is going to be using to bless you and lift you let me tell you for a major part of your relationship with them you will feel like killing them and killing yourself you will need to be tolerant until the day the grace that was on them for you comes to fruition do you think that do you know read about elijah historically speaking you know that elijah was a temperous man so don't blame the sons of the prophets i'm sure they had had it enough with him but elisha said no way it was dr mudok who said adaptation is proof of honor you have to learn to adapt the man who god has sent to help you and give you money to start out life he's an angry man don't forgive him tolerate him he will insult you for one year but the day he sends an alert into your account it will be an answer to your prayer of 10 years endure 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 hardship as a faithful soldier don't say i'm angry is he god and then you make that costly mistake and you find out later through your pain that all blessings come from god through men to men are we together i'm saying this because i doubt if there are any persons here who are not connected to some superiors who may not have the 
the, the most commendable character disposition is not unusual with leaders. Whether in ministry, whether in corporate life, whether in family life, you will find reasons to have superiors, contemporaries, and even subordinates that may not be at their best character-wise. Now the responsibility is on you to build that system of tolerance so that you can stay in the harshest of environments and still find your joy until the blessing that that environment should give you comes. Many of you, if you don't learn this, you will abort many great seasons in your life because of anger. i rather die than come and be washing a car for my uncle. Am I God? And the Holy Spirit says, keep washing. But then one day, as you wash that car, you will not know you are washing your own car. And your uncle comes out and says, sit down here. Let me tell you a story. In 1945, and by the time he's done telling you that story, and he tells you how he lived under a bridge, he tells you how he was betrayed and stabbed when a car hit him, he now starts telling you his stories. Then you will be broken. And you will say, and you are still standing? You lost your job. You lost all your investments in 1971. You went abroad only for you to be jailed in prison for five years. Uncle, I never knew this about you. And now you see the reason why he's suspicious of everybody. Because he's had over how many decades of pain. Can I tell you? You must be able to tolerate and forbear people just because they have not told you their stories. There are people who have been so broken and wounded in relationships. The moment they see anybody coming close, I'm not even talking of just married relationships, any kind. They have been scammed by business people. Someone has come and said, I want to marry you and the person just broke their heart and went away. And the moment they see someone coming, that fear comes. Give accommodation for people's pain. Don't just generalize and conclude. There are others who have done businesses with people. They were scammed, cheated. Are we together? And they had nothing to say. So when you come to meet them and say there is a business idea and they become so meticulous and they are asking questions, who is your father? Where do you come from? Where do you worship? And you are saying all for this small business. Uh -uh. Be tolerant. When people have gone through pain in their life, their pain builds a new vista by which they view life. Are we together? There are people seated here right now. You are listening to me. And you are only here truly because of the message of God. The things you've gone through in your life. Did you know that there are children who have killed their own parents? Do you know there are parents who have killed their own children? Terrorists are all across the nation. And you will be surprised that some of the people who have been kidnapped, the information and the planning came from people who were close. Sometimes a kiss that is supposed to be a sign of intimacy can be the signal to the enemy. And I'm standing here only because you made, you made a way. That's the testimony of certain people here. They set up five, ten companies and traveled abroad. Returned back and found out that people had changed the documents and left them in pain. Forbear. Just because people do not tell you their stories does not mean they do not have stories. Are we together? I remember a man of God who wanted to invite me some years ago and he kept asking questions who is this where did he come from and the people who were trying to encourage him to invite me at the point they got fed up and they said what kind of man is this and when the person reached me in anger and said can you imagine wanted to give this man the privilege of having you and he was asking all kinds of senseless questions I said no you may not know who has climbed his pulpit and caused a lot of pain to his membership you may not know who climbed his pulpit and used one hour to create something that took five years to correct. Allow the man vet me. There are some of you here, you heard about me many years ago, but it took you many years of watching, of looking, of hearing, 
of verifying your suspicions until you got to a point where you are comfortable. You deserve to be left until you find reasons to. There are people who have not gone through anything in life or have gone through too many things they don't fear again. <laughs> yes, sir. There is a way you go through too much pain, you don't fear pain again. They bring a business, you say, no problem. I just came out of prison, let's do another one. If it doesn't work, that's it. <laughs> and I'm standing here only because you you made a way made a way when our backs were against the wall and it looked as if it was over you made a way and we're standing here only because you made write it very quickly we have to end number six what is the sixth principle that you need to engage if you want to be blessed by association you want to maintain relationships number six you have to become an active contributor to the growth of that relationship you want to maintain relationships that count you must be an active contributor to the growth of that relationship Parasitic relationships are self-centered and dangerous relationships. Unfortunately, our world is full of these kinds of parasitic relationships where the contribution is one-sided. You see this with business people. You see this with family people. You see this with ministers. Can I challenge you? Do not be in any relationship where you are only receiving. There are people like that. If you ever see a text or a call from them, they are in need. So they will send the text and our ah, Calvary greetings in the name of Jesus Christ. You know that that's just a preamble. Sorry, I've come again. Oh, you know that uh, it was by this time last year. Can I tell you this? It's a terrible thing for people to know you as being a self-centered person. It's an ugly way to live. Biology, nature teaches us that it is giving and receiving that balances life. There are people, as I speak to you now, they are so self-centered. They don't care what happens to anybody. They fish relationships like fishermen. What can I get? What is in need for me? And that is the ultimate drive. Can I tell you this? It is heartbreaking when people know that you are in their lives only to receive, never to give. It is a terrible thing. I used to give an example many years ago in Zaria how that I, I hope it doesn't happen again you know there are conductors you know conductors that um, that 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 manage these vehicles that pick people town service and sometimes you see them all in an effort to get the car filled they can come and dance around you and say oh beautiful lady come and enter this car and to them they are looking at hundred naira or 200 naira that's all that they want the car to be filled so that they will move and out of that self-centered nature they will flatter you and say all kinds of nice things while they are talking to you if someone enters that car and is filled they will leave you right there and be on their way going now you are you are just about to be enjoy the moment it is painful when people know that all that you do to them is for yourself through them not for them that means that you are nice to someone but you've sat down and you've calculated it that in being nice this is what i have to gain so let's be nice let's call him apostle because these signs and wonders we need it after we receive it, you can call him whatever it is that's why it pleases the father so much when we love him and we worship him because of who he is not because of what we get it gives joy to the father when he sees us rolling on the floor blessing his name and worshiping him and he comes to you and says to what end and you say i just love you for who you are imagine that someone be have you seen people who were so nice you began to be afraid because you suspected that this this cannot be for nothing and then you now meet them and say okay so why i mean just what is it and they say no i'm just like that 
just like that because our world is a selfish world every time people say good afternoon sir they are not saying good afternoon sir what they mean is you better not allow my honor pass like that without your reciprocating it it is terrible and almost irritating to live in a self-centered world there has to be someone who is true enough that can love you for who you are stand with you and by you for who you are and let me tell you this there are people like that do not think everybody is a self-centered person who is just trying to use people no there may be many but there are a few that are sincere when they love they love sincerely when they give they give sincerely become an active contributor to any relationship that you are part of in your office don't sit down and say our boss is there whilst we are here they've not increased our salary now december is coming let's watch and see what will happen now what can i do for you my lord i want you to know my heart is yours very powerful song what can i do for you my lord i want you to know my i prayed and i told god something and it's still my confession today that i have never sought his face because of tea and bread it's not fame or anointing or power that brought me to ministry i came because i truly loved him and for the rest of my life for as long as i have breath living in me money fame reputation will never be motivations for my serving the lord thank god for the little that you know he's brought all of the tokens that follow priesthood i am grateful and indebted to him but that was never the motivation i am amazed to see the things that drive people into ministry today i am amazed to see the things that drive people into the pursuit of god today there are many people who seek him simply because they said you will not fail when you seek him that's an investment i love him with my life if he tells me to put down this mic today and become a cleaner in this house i stand by the god of heaven and i tell you this you will come back next week and find me cleaning here with the same joy and the same passion that i had because it's an honor to serve his majesty it's a privilege to be counted as one who can be a lifter of his word to the nations you must change your perspective many of you are disappointed today because you are not contribution conscious you are receiving conscious you come to the house of someone and you say this man is a rich man see money all over the table and you are watching senator honorable and in your mind you are saying god punish you sir you are my uncle and we've been suffering like this his car is dirty you never wash it there is no let me tell you this ask blessed people or people of influence they are very very fast to detect people who are selfless you come to the house and in five minutes you are washing the car you are looking for something to do first they will suspect that you are not sincere then they will allow time to prove your sincerity when they find you true they will bring you in and even treat you more than their biological children there are people who are working in certain corporations today not because they merited it by their technical skills they have shown such level of selflessness and dependability it's true do not be a self-centered person what is in it for me we do this um, sadly i love my precious nation nigeria but we need to change our values and our ideology every time we see a politician or a head of parliament or some wealthy person the first thing is what is in it for me wow this is his car sean sir good afternoon sir sir i'm, I'm greeting you know, why can't you think and say what can i do how can i improve this man's life sir it looks like can i wash your car for how much no 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 nothing just to honor you as a seed
it is powerful when you find selfless people who love you and love what you are doing just like that can i tell you i found a few of these people in my life and in this ministry and my goodness it is priceless to watch selflessness in action you see everything done with passion and the goal is never for self change your mindset some of you have been hated by many people today battles that are needless i can't be friends with this man he's not a millionaire what will i get nothing go what of you i hear your dad is a senator uh, can we be friends oh he didn't win the election oh really okay you hear from me and that's it <laughs> nobody wants to commit himself to a life over something that will not last because of selflessness there are politicians here and there are many who are listening you see people dance around them during election get their money the moment they lose that election not even a call to say may the lord encourage you mm -mm. they delete the number immediately and they go to the opposing person well done sir i didn't tell you i've really been for you it's not just that i didn't I made up my mind that as far as it depends on me I will serve the Lord with all my heart can I tell you sincerely my beloved people I have never served you and served Jesus so that I can get something for my pocket or get a name I stand by the God who called me I'm telling you this when I serve you I serve you as a privilege from the depth of my heart it is an honor that God gave me if I die today, you will try to raise me back. If I don't wake up, you will go and throw me in the grave. And that's the end of it. And the work of the Lord continues. It is a privilege to be able to serve. Most men of God will not be able to say this because they think if you say it, people will look down on you. It's the truth. You can do nothing against the truth but for the truth. As for me, I will serve with all my heart. I will serve his majesty and i'll serve as many as he has brought under my care but let me challenge you be a selfless person there are some of you who because of this attitude of not contributing you can stand with a friend you are discussing kingdom you can buy bonds for almost 200 naira eat in the presence of the person finish it squeeze the leather drop it and you are still talking what sort of a life is that we have to change there are some of us who will buy food in front of children they are running around us you will eat there and the children ah, don't disturb me and finish it there and leave the children when i saw the video of our our the visitation to the idp camps i saw the hunger ravaged faces of some of those children i was almost in tears i said every one of these kids have a destiny in christ and just because you are not in their position however you are able to reach them let these people see the love of jesus i was even told i think i hope i'm right on that that there was one who had had malaria to a point that it deteriorated the person he was in coma in the camp there it was when the doctors when they saw the person they rushed i don't i hope the person survived can i tell you life is beautiful when you are a giver life is beautiful when you can give there is a law that when you give it comes to you but focus on the giving it is more blessed to give not just money there are many of us who are like that a program is organized one naira from it does not come from you someone is doing something in your city and your area you are never part of anything that does not directly benefit you if your name will be written on it and some kind of honor will be given then i can do it but once i'm going to be silent no i want a name through it no it is my prayer for everyone here that every relationship that you have now in your life and every association you become an intentional contributor if you are a man of god you have friends don't sit down and say people are forgetting my birthday forgetting my anniversary forgetting no become a contributor to that relationship hello how are you i notice it's like i've been sensing in my heart that you're not happy is there anything i can pray for you for eh, no 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 please talk to me you can trust me i can pray 
and the person says thank god i found someone do you know what it means to be a shoulder for someone to lean on it's more than being gifted being gifted is wonderful but it can be limited You've heard me say that my greatest desire aside being a minister of the gospel is that by the grace and the mercy of God that I can be a shoulder for someone to lean on. It's true. We don't have all this life that if someone is crying, let my hands at least be able, if I cannot do anything, let me help to wipe the tears. If I cannot pray with you and I cry with you together and I say, Lord, show mercy to this person, it's a contribution. Let me challenge you. Do not allow this week from today till next Sunday happen without you doing something active and quality in the life of someone. Especially someone undeserving. Are we blessed? Let me give you the final one and we're done for tonight. So 6 be an active contributor to the growth of that relationship. It is also the reason why we are having the workers' appreciation dinner, an opportunity. I'm the one hosting it to tell the people, thank you. Thank you. It's one thing to be called by God. I can tell you one truth, that God has blessed me and blessed this ministry with such passionate workers. People who love Jesus sincerely. You know that they are not just doing it for apostles. Number seven, the seventh key as far as maintaining relationships that eventually culminate to your being blessed is that you practice genuine love. Write it down. This is the last. Practice genuine love. Three scriptures very quickly. Proverbs 10, 12. Proverbs 10, 12. Hatred stirred up strife, but love covered all sins. Hatred stirred up strife, but love covered all sins. John 13 35, very instructive scripture. John 13 35, by this, this singular sign, this singular attribute, shall all men know that ye are my disciples not when you are an anointed apostle not when you have a great ministry not when you pray in tongues by this shall all men know that you are my disciples if ye have love not for me one to another your love life is the clearest biblical index to measure your maturity more than tongues more than rema more than greek and hebrew words more than the theatrics of of ministry love first john chapter four first john chapter four from verse um Let's see 26. First John 4. Let's start from, is there 20? First John 4. If a man say, I love God and hated his brother, he is a liar. For he that loveth not his brother whom he had seen, how can he love God whom he had not seen? Are you saying that now? That if you say you love God and you hate men, there is something questionable about your love. Your love for God is tested in and through your love for men. Can I tell you this? Loving the undeservable is true love. When you love people who do not deserve to be loved, that is true love. One of the secrets that I learned about walking in the anointing is that if you want to see the power of God manifest in such marvelous dimensions in your life, then you must be one who walks in genuine love, not selective love. Genuine love. It must become your default disposition. 
and i have by the grace of god kept this truth and i have seen it work in my life there are pastors who hate their members you cannot bless a people you hate the power of god cannot flow through you to bless the people god sees my heart and god knows that i love everyone who is part of this vision that i love you sincerely not because of anything tm no no my beloved is the most beautiful among thousands and thousands my beloved is the most beautiful among thousands and thousands Yeshua Yeshua medical doctors are here they will tell you that living in anger bitterness jealousy all these things i have mentioned they don't just have spiritual side effects they have medical side effects you can literally dry up your bones there are many sicknesses today that were not originally caused by demons demons only found a door and cashed in on it to bring many people down to their knees and sadly many to the grave and lot went with him association demands that you rid yourself of jealousy association demands forbearance forgiveness association demands that you become an active contributor show me any man or any woman by god who works in keeping with these principles and remains alone show me any man or woman by god who works in keeping with these principles who will remain small and mediocre no it is a key to an excelling life it is a key to an excelling destiny many people by this message tonight god intends for you to be healed to show you first and foremost that you're ignoring the power of associations and relationship is costing you more than you would ever know and then number two to make up your mind determined by the power and the grace of god that from tonight until forever i am going to insist on quality relationships by practicing these principles go back home go online and listen to this message again and again don't assume you have gotten everything listen to it as many times as your spirit would require until it becomes spirit and life and then obtain grace from god to immediately become a practitioner of these truths and you will watch your life with astonishing wonder move from one dimension of grace to the other first your life will become a true expression of the life and the character of the christ in experience and then number two you will find out that you become an attractive force drawing all kinds of men all kinds of helpers all kinds of individuals who come into your life ready to hold your hands ready to defend you ready to stand by you ready to lift you that no matter what the problem has been as far as background and the rest is concerned god is giving you a key tonight that can help you are you ready to pray please rise up on your feet rise up on your feet let's take a minute or two to pray and then i'll speak over your life listen to me i want you to hear this while you're standing i hope that in another teaching god will grant us grace probably next year to teach you about men there are things about men you need to understand one all men are men so let it be no news to you 
all men no matter how great no matter how anointed all men the best of any and every man is still a man so there should be no surprises number two listen carefully that as flawed as men are god still hides his treasures in men the secret of walking with men was found in the riddle of samson out of something strong came something sweet samson passed to go and see a particular woman and he found he killed a lion and after seven days the bees they did not find a fresh green tree to put honey they went and put honey inside a carcass it's a riddle there if you want the honey you must be willing to endure the smell of that carcass in the midst of the smell of that carcass there is still honey in it out of that angry man still there is an anointing that can lift you out of that nonchalant father who does not care whether your school fees is paid or not there might be one prophetic blessing that can come out of his bowels to lift you out of that self-centered relative who does not care if you die one day his influence is able to open a door for you out of that man of god who always looks sarcastic talk sarcastic one day you will find the treasure of wisdom that can help you out of your siblings that may not seem to be people who have whatever kind of wisdom you desire something will come out from them that will become your blessing prayer point number one lord give me the stamina and the discernment to endure relationships until that which was supposed to come out from them to me comes lift your voice and pray the grace to endure and the grace to be an active contributor to every relationship go ahead and pray ministerial relationships business relationships go ahead and pray even our relationship with god there are times we don't understand him but we trust him we trust him there are times it does not make sense what he's doing there are families who trusted god and lost loved ones there are people who trusted god and lost jobs there are times it looks like god seems to not be understood but even at that we still love him and we trust him there are times that you as a person your life becomes complicated even to you you may not even be able to explain and give definition to what you are doing someone is praying lord grant me the grace to know that all men are men at best grant me the grace to be able to endure the humanity of men until I receive that treasure that is locked up within them. Hallelujah. Last relation, last um, prayer point on relationships now. We are going to pray. Father, in this season, bring to my life the strategic people you have ordained for the next level of my destiny. And listen, listen, listen. I'm not done and grant me the grace to maintain those relationships until they bless me do you understand the prayer point you are praying listen there are some of us because of this teaching god is going to close some relationships in your life believe me you will not like it but it's a circumcision they will have to go out because they are not profiting where god is taking you to and it does not have to be evil people there are good people who are not so constructed for where god is taking you god will have to cut them out of your life but then god is also introducing new people into your space and you must have the discernment to receive them because some of them will not come in the form that is worthy of reception you need discernment therefore pray lord in this prophetic season of my life bring to my life the people that are responsible please pray you are a politician you are a businessman you are a man of god you are following online you are a pastor watching you are a man of god lift your voice and pray a family person lord bring to my life in this season my heart is open 
for strategic connections connections that will be the lift the ladder and the leverage for the next level of my life grant me the fortitude to be friendly grant me the patience and the endurance to receive of these people when they come please pray send to my life oh god the men and women who are needed for the next season of my destiny and grant me the grace to invest strategically into these relationships you can also pray cut away from my life oh god relationships that will only end up destroying me cut away from my life oh god relationships that are not profitable as far as the next level of my kingdom agenda is concerned hallelujah hallelujah and god called abraham and lot went with him and lot went with him it's time for you to follow and follow sincerely and it's time for you to be followed to a safe heaven people should not follow you to doom and you should not follow men to destruction followership leads to glory and honor not destruction pay attention to your association there's no such thing as we're born together with no 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 throw away all those sentiments and be very unashamed go back let me give you an honest assignment maybe two of them number one go and write the list of the top five people in your life who are the greatest contributors to your growth your loving jesus and your excelling in life invest in those relationships i have taught it here you cannot generalize relationships and treat everybody the same not everybody thinks you are a big deal there are people today joshua selman to them looks like oh it's just one of those men of god that's all right there are people who joshua selman looks to them like oh it's a, it's a man of god i think he's doing something well there are others oh joshua selman is a relative somewhere there are others who believe that Joshua Selman is a gift from God, sent from God to them. I would be stupid to treat all these groups of people the same way. No, I love everybody, but I will not invest the same level of energy and passion into it. No. See, when you find people who make you a big deal under God, be unashamed to invest your time and energy and your resources. There are people who have shown genuine care, genuine love, genuine concern genuine prayer out of their way there are others who don't care i'm not talking about me i'm saying when you go and look at your emotional space your world today you will find people who sincerely love you who will give anything for you do not throw those people away no there are people who are very casual in your life construct your emotional energy don't just throw your strength to anybody and be disappointed when people sow that seed of honor respectfully speaking there are men and women of god across the globe across this nation who have gone out of their way intentionally to build a relationship with me have been humbled flattered and even broken by their unashamedness to want a relationship and now i have reciprocated with sincerity and love you see that if you don't invest into any relationship don't expect returns don't budge into people's lives and expect that they give you the same place they are given with everyone it doesn't make sense i think this is a word of caution for many of us before we wrap up there are many of us who just appear in people's lives no antecedents there is no track record of your standing by them helping them committing to their lives and their welfare you can't just appear into people's lives and want to be given a place of honor the same way with those no no it's not done that way there are people today i have not committed into their lives 
to the degree that they should give me certain levels of honor. It would be stupid of me to want that level of honor. I have not made that level of spiritual, financial, emotional investment into that relationship. Similarly, there are others who um, you should not just put yourself under pressure to feel that I have to invest this much. No. What was put in it? Show me prayers. Show me sacrifice. Show me forgiveness. Show me tolerance. These are the indices that makes for when someone is investing into a relationship, he does it with joy, knowing that this is what has gone into it. I'm saying this as a word of caution so that you don't find offense when you call a man and say, I know this man. I'm calling him and he's not picking. He's a CEO today and he's acting strange. Were you there when he cried? When his children died, were you there? When they were crying in pain, and were you there? When he had a legal case, were you there to pray with him? Don't appear. Many people do this even to politicians. These people go through pain. They go through all kinds of embarrassment. And God now shows them mercy. And the moment they emerge, those who were there that suffered with them, we come and push those people away. And come and stand and want a position of honor. It is unfair. So, you must obtain grace from God. You must find someone's destiny that is worth your commitment. Don't wait and say, who is there who will commit to me? It may be a mother, a father, a brother, a sister, a spouse, a leader, a man of God, whoever, make sure you do something. Let me pray for you. We have to wrap up. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I decree and declare, you have taught us a very deep mystery, blessed by association, that our relationships and associations have far-reaching implications than most of us know i pray for everyone under the sound of my voice if there is any relationship that through carelessness or lack of discernment you have lost today that is costing you so much i pray and i call upon my god who is also your god may god show you mercy and bring restoration in the name of jesus christ number two I pray for you that all the principles that need to be engaged to maintain quality, profitable relationships, relationships with your superiors, your contemporaries, and your subordinates, I declare the grace to walk in keeping with these principles. May you receive that grace now in Jesus' name. Thirdly, I pray for you. Because I sense in my spirit, like I, I, I said this weeks ago, or I think a few months ago, that there are people whose seasons are coming to an end in their lives, and other seasons are starting. Let me pray for you. The persons, the groups, the associations that God has mandated himself to be part of your life, for your rising, for your lifting. In the name of Jesus, you will not miss out with them in this season. Everything that makes for offense, everything that makes for bitterness, jealousy, unforgiveness, I declare that it leaves your life right now. The endurance you need, the adaptability you need, the stamina you need, the maturity, the sense of forbearance you need to maintain these prophetic relationships so that they can deliver to you that which God has put in them. I release that grace upon you in Jesus' name. And hear me. Those of you who currently have relationships mandated by God. And it has, is yet to deliver to you the prophetic benefit that, that should have come from that relationship. I decree and declare, beginning from this week, begin to reap the benefits that come with that relationship. In the name of Jesus Christ. And hear me. Whoever has forgotten you. That should remember you for the sake of the name of the Lord in this season. I call upon the God of my covenant. And I declare that this week will not pass until they call you. In the name of Jesus Christ. 
keep standing everyone the greatest relationship that we need that makes for us to be blessed indeed please no movement let's respect the altar call is the relationship with jesus christ you can have a relationship with joshua selman koinonia the body of christ but in order of priority the greatest relationship that the bible mandates that a man can have that the profitability of that relationship is here on earth and even in the afterlife is the relationship with jesus for many of you you have received this call and this proposition for a long time jesus is calling you he's standing like one who truly desires that relationship now there are two groups of people i want to call very quickly our time is up number one those who are saying apostle whilst listening to you the holy spirit began to convict me i'm inside i'm outside following online the overflows i need jesus that's category number one number two there are those who are saying apostle i came to jesus but i truly trivialized my relationship with him and i have replaced him with so many things and i want that restoration of relationship wherever you are i'm going to count one to five we have just a minute for this whether you are across the balcony inside here all of the overflows very proudly like one who is coming back to a savior and a friend come god bless you i'm counting one to five softly and tenderly jesus is calling calling for you and for me keep coming two three is calling for you come home come home you are weary come home softly and tenderly jesus is calling calling four are you coming to jesus come to him with pride and come to him with joy the bible declares that as many who will come to him that he will in no wise cast away come come he can give you a new beginning this can be a fresh start for you do not allow december go like that jesus is calling no matter what you have done no matter where you have been he can give you a new beginning in the name of jesus now i salute every single one of you thank you for your determination to come to jesus when you come to him he does not bring you down he lifts you up it is your relationship with him that begins your journey in this kingdom are we together the bible declares for god so loved the world that he gave his one and only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life thank you for coming may i request that you lift your right hand inside and outside everywhere following online and all of you who are following from your homes your offices your devices you can follow lift your hands before jesus i want you to say this after me but when you say it let it be from the depth of your heart say lord jesus tonight i have heard your word i need you in my life i declare that you are my savior you are my lord and you are my king i declare that i am a recipient of eternal life from tonight i declare that the power of sin satan hell and the grave is broken over my life from tonight i am a child of god i love you with all my heart this relationship is forever therefore i go forward ever and backward never amen keep your hands lifted father thank you for this once thank you for the joy of this divine relationship. hello scriptures exhort us from the book of proverbs it says my son attend to my sins incline thy ears to my words let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee as you have listened to this message
We believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well. That you will keep these words in the midst of your heart. That no matter the circumstance, your eyes are going to be fixed on these words. And as you have been blessed, we will tell you to share this message. Be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed. And then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos. We have loads of content that is going to make you blessed. That is going to set you on course. That is going to set you ablaze. And don't forget to like for us. Thank you.